Welcome back to another episode of Cobra Kai Companion. I am Peter. And I am Brianna. You guys, we got another special interview. Jacob Bertrand, who plays Hawk. Uh, uh, Eli, a.k.a. Hawk. How you doing, Jacob? I'm doing good, man. How you doing? Hey, doing really, uh, doing swell, actually. Uh, thank you for joining us. Um, I want to thank you, first and foremost, well, thank you for coming on the show, but congratulations on the debut on Netflix, man. It must be overwhelming for you. Oh, yeah. We were all super, super excited when we heard that it was going to be moving over to Netflix. And yeah, I definitely could not be happier. Uh, hang on. I'm just moving the video. You guys keep talking. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, Jacob, yeah. what have you been doing up lately? Um, we know that you just put out Judd's Decision, right? That's a, a short that you just worked on with some of the crew, Hiro Janelle, uh, John, Gisette, um, and Ken, all part of the, uh, your short film there. Yeah, and don't forget uh, Sholo. He was the main man. He did my makeup and everything. Billy Zabka did the craft services. Double OG. Okay. Uh, Gianni, <laughs> did he do some wardrobe? I think I saw in the credits. He he did all the wardrobe, actually. The special ripaway shirt. He sewed it and everything. Oh, that's right. He, he does do sewing. Yeah. Um, now, that was filmed in Alabama, was it? Yeah, yeah. Ken's brother uh, has a compound in Alabama that we ended up shooting it at. Okay. It, now, was this also like about the time that you went to go hang out with Hito and Janelle over in Colorado, or what was that about? This was um, during the filming of season three that we we made the short film in a day, and uh, I forget how late into the season it was. Pretty late season three, like I want to say around episode eight or nine, we all of us had a day off and we kind of just snuck off and um, and and shot that for the day. Uh, yeah, but I went to go visit uh, Hito and Janelle this summer, uh, kind of during uh, quarantine and everything, just trying to get away to the rural rural uh, Colorado. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, they're they're a lovely couple. We got to meet them when we were down in Atlanta as well. Um, how, how long? Did, so obviously you wrote, directed it. How, how long was the process for that? Was that something that you've been working on during Cobra Kai, or uh, when when did you want to get into writing? So I had the idea for that uh, for that short in high school. Um, I've been gra- – geez, I graduated in 2018. So, yeah, like for two years been out of high school. It sounds weird to say. But, uh, yeah, I had the idea for that in high school because for Chapman, USC, and all of these um, film production majors, the requirement was a video. It was like two to five minutes, uh, no dialogue of the character making a choice. And – that was kind of the first idea that popped into my head. And that's what I was uh, planning on making and then sending to those colleges. But because um, because of Cobra Kai and all the filming, I kind of just – I honestly kind of dropped the ball and just didn't even like send anything and didn't end up um, applying to a lot of those colleges. I still ended up applying to Chapman, which was great. But uh, yeah, so then finally I was like, hey, you know what? I kind of want to – I rewrote it uh, while we are in Atlanta that season – um in about a couple days and then i drew out every frame kind of like a little in storyboards and i would just show that to hito and i was like come on bro like let's make this come on please like help me out and he's like yeah yeah i got you i got you uh so yeah it, it was honestly pretty thrown together and i just had this notebook of all the shots that i wanted and we just went through the day and we kind of did block shooting where everything in one angle we just did all right there even if it was different parts of the short film and that's kind of how we shot it just blown through the because we only had a day you know yeah yeah you, know, you did a great job i mean there's a comedic moment i don't want to spoil it for those that haven't seen it yet that <laughs> caught me off guard i was just like oh i didn't see that coming and i'm sure the character didn't either so it is pretty awesome but hey let's get to know you a little bit before we start talking about some of your other stuff now you <laughs> dabble in some cooking yeah oh yeah i'm a big cook. yeah okay yeah, um, I, I might have to send you a rice cooker. I heard you might be uh, in need of one. <laughs> yeah, you, you, I'm sure you heard that story where we forgot the rice cooker in the bottom of the shopping cart. I, I don't know if it was we. I heard a different story. I, I heard <laughs> you. <laughs> Guy. Uh, no, uh, yes, through some miscommunication, uh, we unfortunately, I unfortunately lost a rice cooker that I purchased. Yeah, uh, so Sholu actually didn't share that on the interview. That was off mic. That was something that he wanted me to kind of throw at you during our interview here. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, of course. No, yeah, we went shopping, and 
I don't know. I, I love rice. And so we went out and bought a decent, like, middle of the road rice cooker. And I forgot it in the cart. And we drove away. And I called the grocery store. And they're like, yeah, that thing's gone. <laughs> you, you asked uh, them about a uh, lost and found, right? Yeah, yeah, I was like, do you have a lost and found? They're like, no. <laughs> right. Well, Sholo said that it was uh, the Cadillac of rice cookers. He said that it was probably a little bit more high end than two single dudes needed. <laughs> uh i don't i don't i honestly don't really know i i kind of just looked at all the prices and was like the middle one that's usually what i do i don't know if that's a good tactic but i, I never go for the cheapest or the most expensive i'll just go straight for the middle <laughs> i think that's a good it's a safe bet yeah that's that's yeah. usually pretty safe um you started out your career obviously as a disney kid um yeah. and like some of the first roles you had were voice roles right yeah. on cartoons um my nephew is a huge kirby buckets fan my niece loved bubble guppies when she was little um kind of strange hearing you say eli by the way um <laughs> yeah i bet yeah I, I i hadn't watched it from this perspective and i was you know brushing up on it today and it was like that is really strange hearing that voice that name came out of his his voice but um how did you get started in voice acting that seems like a, a strange thing for a child to go into. Yeah. Um, when I was younger and kind of first started acting, the agency I was with had a voiceover department. And when I did the interview to kind of like get with that agency, um, the people in the voice department, they kind of took a liking to my voice and my younger brother's voice who also does um, voiceover. And uh, we just kind of started like that. Just they would send us out on auditions. We would come in and record. And, you know, I was lucky enough to book some stuff. And when I was younger, I had a really high pitched, super raspy voice, which I guess isn't super, super common. Um, and that's kind of, yeah, that's kind of how I got started. We we're very lucky that, that there's a voiceover department at Osbrink. They're very clutch. Are, are you um, ever looking to kind of get back into doing any of that? Yeah, actually, um, in quarantine, uh, I was able to um, book a podcast. It's like a podcast TV show. Um, so it's like a TV show, but only the sounds and everything. Right. Uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to like say what it's called or anything, and I don't want. I don't want to like err on the side of caution here. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, it'll come out. Uh, I think either like late 2020 or early 2021. Um, so that'll be pretty cool. So I was able to do that. And then, and then, yeah, I still, um, uh, go out and do, I mean, they still reuse my voice for a bunch of stuff. Like all the Simba toys are, or my voice, which is, I think is kind of funny, but, um, <laughs> Oh really? So my granddaughter has a toy with your voice coming out of it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you got a Simba plushie that, uh, chances are that's probably my voice when I was like 10. Oh, <laughs> <That's> okay. <awesome. laughs> yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Um, so another one, another, you know, pre Cobra Kai, which ties into Cobra Kai, of course, um, is The Swap, which I watched today. Oh, yeah. Such a sweet little movie. Um, okay. And you and Peyton both did such a good job playing each other. I was kind of curious how much time you spent together, like teaching each other your own mannerisms and things like that. Um, Before that movie, I had never... I thought I'd met her briefly in passing. Um, she probably wouldn't even remember, but uh, uh, we got there maybe. My timeline sucks. Maybe like two, three weeks before we got to Toronto, two, three weeks before we started filming. And we would kind of just hang out and hang out with the other cast. And that's kind of how we got to know each other and pick up little mannerisms and quirks and stuff. And we, I mean, throughout the whole entire shoot, shoot, you know, we would text each other lines be like hey like how would you say this or facetime you're like hey you know what how, how would what's your like initial read on this you know just to sort of um keep that true and that, it was really fun it, that was a super super fun movie to make everyone on the cast was super awesome and uh i really like toronto toronto super cool you know I, I would imagine for a role like that you know to take something from cobra Kai, you got to go all in but in the movie, the swap is there. Was there anything that made you a little uncomfortable, or just like, ah, oh, gosh, I really don't know about this, but still went with it anyway? Um, the uh, the only thing that felt like really out of my skin was there's a scene 
in the swap where I am uh, Peyton and I'm out of the shower and I have the towel, you know, up on my chest and one on my head. And I, ha- and I was like, they were like, sit like a girl, you know, and which is such a funny thing to say. And they really wanted me to like cross my legs like a girl and that, and just like really thinking about it and purposely like crossing my legs and holding the phone up a certain way. It just, I don't know. It's, it, I don't know if it was uncomfortable. It just felt weird, but it ended up being a really funny moment uh, in the in the movie. So it's one of the ones you sold the best because I actually remember that because you hooked your toes around the back of your calf, which <laughs> only women do. So yeah, I was, was like, he's was, got this. Yeah, there were really really little things. Peyton was there uh, while we, while we were shooting that, and she was totally like making fun of me, like, no, do it more, do it more, you know. Now, uh, before you got into uh, Cobra Kai, did you have any kind of history with uh, martial arts or fascinations with um, that genre? Um, I had a good, like, four years of Taekwondo. Uh, I was like a blue or purple belt. I don't even really remember. Honestly, it didn't really help that that much. But um, one thing that I was really into when I was younger was grappling. Um, so I, I did that for two years, like, decently serious. Seriously, but uh, yeah, I mean, not a ton of martial arts background, but I mean, I would always be fighting with my brother, so I obviously love to wrestle and fight. So um, we've we've heard from Sholo and Mary and Tanner all this this same story, which is how much knowledge did you have about the Karate Kid going into your audition? Did you realize what you were auditioning for? Because it seems to be pretty standard that no one knew. Uh, I actually, I knew because I came on later. They were, I was auditioning, I think like their first week of filming. So I knew exactly what the show was. I had seen the Karate Kid, unlike Sholo, who it was like the, which I think is so funny. We used to give him so much crap for that. Like, dude, you literally are the next Karate Kid and you have not seen the Karate Kid. He's always like, I've seen the Jaden Smith one. I know, I know. Like, bro, it's their impersonations anyway. of each other are uncanny. Your 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 him is exactly like his you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? It, it yes. really is. I, <laughs> you, well, I mean, we we live together, so right. Uh, we, yeah, we live together when we film, so that we're definitely have that a uh, kind of husband wife relationship where we can definitely mock each other at at whim at will, you know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah no, I kind of knew what I was like. when I first auditioned for it. Actually, um, I auditioned for Dimitri. Hmm. That was who I first auditioned for. And uh, I had no idea there was a hawk. And they said, hey, we want you to audition for Eli. I was like, oh, okay, cool. Uh, I guess, you know, I'll audition for Eli. And uh, I got into the room, and John was there. He was uh, in L.A. And I started reading. They're like, whoa, like, you have the wrong sides. So I was like, oh, okay. So I got sent out with hawk sides. I was like, what the heck? Who the heck is this guy? This is way different than... Than what I kind of had prepared for, so went out, went back in, you know, five ten minutes later, and did the audition. And then I want to say, like, a couple hours later, I got a call that you know I had booked it, which is really surreal. That was the fastest. Um, I think they were like on crunch time, you know, because like within that week, I was on a plane to Atlanta to go film. That, oh, wow. That's so interesting. Yeah, w- one of the the fun trivia's that we found out about the character Dimitri that he was originally an Indian kid named Tanzit. So yeah. I'm I'm very curious to see like, uh, or I wonder who else maybe auditioned for that for that character. If you also auditioned, you, it was a f- dude I knew from Disney. I forget his name. He's a really cool guy. He auditioned for it when it was Tanzit too, and I remember talking to him in the waiting room. Oh, gosh, his name escapes me. Anyway, I won't I won't put him on blast for yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. He went out for it and didn't, didn't get. But <laughs> uh, did you know Peyton was coming on? Did you find out after the fact, or did they say that she was reading for it? They were looking for a Tory for a really long time. Um, that was one of the harder. I mean, just because like we had known about the role because they told us season. Like season two, like, oh, yeah, we're writing this role. You know, um, you know, this is what she's like. This is what her arc should be. And they're kind of telling all of us. And yeah, they were looking for her for a while. And Peyton had texted me, like, oh my gosh, haha, like, just read for Cobra Kai. Like, that's, 
hilarious like small world you know i was like oh that's so cool and um they were you know having a hard time finding a tory and they the big three i referenced the big three but it's john josh and hayden you know the, the three creators yes uh and they came across peyton's tape and ended up loving it you know same with sony and youtube at the time and uh she ended up hopping on board and john uh came up to me and was like hey you know, we're thinking about Peyton List, and I know that you've worked with her before. You know, how is she? And I was like, she sucks. You know, no, I, was, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I told him, I was like, she is super hardworking and very professional. Um, and she's super, super fun to work with, and she can definitely hold her own, you know. And uh, then a couple weeks, a couple weeks later, you know, Peyton was on the show, and I was like, wow, that's hilarious because you texted me, like, wow, I just auditioned, and now here you are in Atlanta, you know. Do you, do you know if Hawk is is Tori's dad? Is that is that a big reveal in season three? Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, that's the, sorry. Yeah, she's, who told you that? <laughs> hey, I got I got leaks. I got leaks. <laughs> you got the inside, the inside, insider knowledge. Um, how difficult is it? Um, and please don't think I'm crazy for thinking of them as two different people. But who is harder <laughs> to play, Eli, or Hawk? Um, harder, I would, s it's funny because I think of them as one, so it's kind of hard for me to, uh, I would say Hawk just because there's more to him. Not that Eli's one note, but, um, Eli is sort of the caterpillar version of, you know, Hawk and, then there's, you know, Hawk is like the full grown butterfly. Maybe not full grown, grown is the right. Term, but <laughs> like, it's not like they're, because the reason I say it's kind of one person and not like too different is because there's still a lot of Eli that's still in Hawk mm -hmm. and a lot of the insecurities and a lot of the choices that, you know, Hawk makes is stemmed from a lot of the insecurities that he still carries, you know, and like all the stuff with Moon. Like all of the bantering back and forth with her and all the problems that that causes the, you know, trashing Miyagi-Do. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I guess, I guess I would say Hawk is a little more difficult just because finding moments to put Eli in there and where to forego Eli completely. I'd say that's just, just making those choices is, you have to put thought to it, I guess. Right. I, I figure, I mean, I feel like you got to find the right balance, right? Be, uh, when you're playing Hawk, you know, the, the right moments to even reveal there's still a little bit of Eli, things like that. Yeah, that's why I love in season two, you know, after, you know, Hawk gets dumped, I get dumped. Uh, I love all the scenes with, with Hannah, um, who plays Moon, because it's, you get to see Eli, like, as Hawk, you know what I mean? You get, you still get to see that you know, it's not like this dude is gone and there's right. no more left in Hawk. You know, he's still he's still that guy who, you know, still struggles, you know. Yeah, and, and Dimitri can the badass that he is all the time, you know. Is it Dimitri can bring him out? Yes, very true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's also yeah, also having scenes with Gianni is is great. Uh to take it back to uh season one, uh real quick, uh, that's that's the the only time we've really seen the kids in school except for two ten. Um, yeah. what, what were some of your favorite memories? Like, you, obviously, there's the, the Halloween school dance, um, um, things like that. Uh, what, what, what do you remember, whether it's maybe deleted scenes? I know we've spoken with uh, Aaron Bradley Danger, who talked about a deleted scene with, like, um, pizzas being thrown at her or pepperonis. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you remember yeah. that. Uh, I would say, honestly, all the cafeteria scenes were really fun. Uh, I think that was, like, a good maybe like four or five days. I don't know. My timelines are always really bad, but that was really fun because we did all of the scenes where we first met Sholo, you know, where me and Johnny at the table. We did all the fight scenes that were in the cafeteria. Um, that was just a blast. And that's why I, I really got to know, you know, Sholo and Gianni. And whenever I think of season one, that's usually the, the moment that I think of the Halloween, the Halloween, uh, little part was really fun the halloween dance was really sweet uh, and then obviously the tournament 
the tournament was bad. That's not the school, but it was really fun. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was excellent timing on that question. Um, Aaron <laughs> Bradley Dangar is in the chat right now. Oh. Um, oh, no way. Yeah, and, and she said that Jacob is such a brilliant actor. Love that he's sharing this peek into his process. Aww. And you're the best. Yes. So sweet. <laughs> um, speaking of the uh, tournament, you did realize that Hawk is the only character badass enough to come with his own sound effect, right? For when he does really impressive <laughs> things. So uh, when we met the guys uh, who score, have you interviewed them, Zach and Leo? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Leo and Zach, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So when I first met them, they were like, dude, you, we gave you a sound effect and a cool guitar riff, you know? <laughs> I just remember they were like, when you hop up, uh, when you hop up on the stage to go fight in the semifinals, you know, we give a, a screech in there. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. Uh, yeah, I my favorite thing about the whole tournament is that everyone has their last name. You know, Diaz and uh, I forget the other King, last name. You know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Tanner's Hawk. up there too. <laughs> yeah, just Hawk. <laughs> just, uh, like I love how somehow he talked them into, no, 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 no. Just put Hawk. Just put Hawk. I think that's, I wish that would have been a scene that, had gotten filmed it was like him going up to the sign in, like, no, it's just Hawk. I'm just well, Hawk. Since uh, you yourself uh, is now a short film writer director, perhaps we can see <laughs> something like that, you know, in the near future here. I would love that. So, you know, if when fingers crossed, uh, season four, I, I do have a pretty funny little um, short that I would like to film on set. That would be nice. pretty funny. Um, talk about timing. Uh, you just mentioned the semifinals and, and you hopping up on the stage. That's one of my favorite moments for, for your character of Hawk. I think it's very badass. Can you give insight to, into that scene? Like, how did they, this, is, is it written on paper that you just hop up on stage? Uh, no. Um, I don't know. So I will admit it's kind of nerdy, but I'm, I'm pretty big, not, I shouldn't say pretty big anime fan, but I do watch a lot of anime and a tournament arc, like, you know, just a whole season of all the characters fighting is pretty common. And a lot of times characters will kind of jump up like that and slam both their feet down and sort of like intimidate everyone. And in my head, I was like, you know what? This is de not even that, like, cause Eli's kind of nerdy. I know this dude watches, watches anime. So I feel like his image of badasses comes from, sort of anime and how Johnny is. So meshing those two together in my head was like, this This is applicable. This is definitely in the realm of what Eli would do. So uh, yeah, that was kind of the inspiration for that, honestly. Uh, but no, yeah, it wasn't in the script that I like hopped up like that or anything. And even the like fist bumps that me and Shola would do right before, that's just kind of something that we came up with. But, um, but yeah, that's, yeah that, that is also one of my favorite moments too, especially because the score like syncs up with when I hop up, which is pretty cool. It's pre yeah, pretty amazing. I, say, I, I think the um, inspiration from anime, as you were saying that, I'm like, yeah, because Hawk is Bakugo, 100%. There's no, <laughs> absolutely you know zero what? doubt. That's so funny that you say that because in season two, uh, <laughs> in season two, when I'm uh, in the computer lab looking for Dimitri at, in episode 10, and I say, uh, you know, Dimitri, are you damn nerd? I totally took that, took that from Bob. It, it sounds still... exactly like him when he's chasing Deku down the down through the the street. Yeah, I yeah, that's it. that's exactly for yeah. I'm, that's hilarious that you caught that, but yeah, that's totally what I what I took that from. Um, so I have some experience as you know a mother and some experience with non neurotypical children. So mm -hmm. one of the lines that stuck out the most to me was you know, Eli mentioning that he could be on the spectrum and that's mm -hmm. something that's always stuck with me. So I wondered, is that something that was a case of the doctor mentioned it, but it didn't turn out to be true. Has there been any, any discussion as to whether or not he actually is? Yeah. So, uh, when I got that scene, I, I asked the big three, I was like, Hey, like, is this something that like, I should know that, you know, Eli, you know, could be on the spectrum. And they're like, no, uh, he's not. It's sort of the doctor said it just as a passing thing, you know, oh, yeah, he could be on the spectrum, you know, yada, yada, yada. Um, because like that, ha you know, that honestly happens sometimes where doctors kind of just like overprescribe or not overprescribe, but uh, 
What's the word I'm looking for? They diagnose. they they like um they do a diagnose. differential yeah. diagnosis before they do the actual one. So, yes. Yeah. yeah. That was kind of what they had um, told me. Um, but no, yeah, that's a, that's a, but going forward from that, I was like, okay, like I'll take, definitely take that into consideration. You know, that that's very slight, the slightest of, you know. Well, it gave you, me another you, reason to hate crease, you know, taking yeah. advantage of a, an NNT child. Yeah. Uh, since we're talking about season two, let's talk about the um, 203 Fire and Ice, the All Valley Fest. Um, obviously, Hawk does a lot of stunts. How much of that was actually you? And um, I'm not sure who uh, was your stunt person at the time. I know, like, Noah plays different characters and things like that, too. Yeah. Yeah, Noah and Mark kind of flip flop for uh, Sholo. But um, I did. I tried, I'd never done wire work before and that, you know, super spinny kick that uh, Gianni's holding the board and breaks. You know, Janelle was like, try it. We'll throw you on the wire if somehow you can miraculously do it. We worked it for like a good like hour and a half because, I mean, that show, it's crunch time, you know, like we're constantly going, going, going. And the only time I would have had to practice that and train that was on the day because that was the only day that we had that location basically. Mm-hmm for two days but um and when the wires are already set up so i tried it and i could get around but it didn't look as spectacular as kane who is actually uh most of the time he's tanner's double um he could do it freaking flawlessly so i he i basically started the move he did it and then i would overlap it and end the move um that there's a role in episode seven of season two that i didn't do and the uh going through the glass trophy case in episode 10 that i didn't do everything else i was uh, they let me do though nice yeah well sholo told us you know his side of the fight at coyote creek and the slipping and the leaves <laughs> and the mud and everything so what is what's your take on that spectacular fight in the woods Shola just doesn't know how to throw a leg sweep i don't know what else to- <laughs> <laughs> no no i'm totally kidding uh that was one of the coldest days. I, I think that was the thing that kind of got to me the most was just how cold it was. Um, but up on top of that hill was super slippery. Just because, I don't, It wasn't even that it was muddy. I think it was just a ton of let we, wet leaves on top of each other. Man, it was, it was kind of rough running around on. And, you know, he had to drop, like drop down and do that, that sweep and – it was tough, you know, and we were on a crunch time and we really needed to get it done. And there was a lot of pressure on him. And, uh, I mean, I think that would have gotten to any of us, honestly, it was, it was a hard, it was a hard, we had a ton of choreography. Um, that role was pretty much the only thing that the stunt guys, that the stunt guy, oh, well, well, they did a whole take themselves, but that role was kind of the only thing I don't want to say that they were needed for, but that, that we didn't know how to do. Um, and I'd say for the most part, Hito and Janelle, you know, John and Mark and Noah and all and Ken, um, they really try to, they really train us a lot because it, it does look better on camera when we're fighting, you can show our face, you know? And I think that that's a big priority of the show, which is awesome. Yeah. I like. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I know, um, speaking with a lot of you guys, you guys want to do your own stunts too. And um, that's why Hito and Janelle are there to kind of facilitate who's going to do what uh, and make those uh, yep. hard decisions. I'll never, I will never forgive Hito for not letting me do the, the trophy case. I will forever. Get- <laughs> okay. I, was, I, I, I totally won't share that with him. <laughs> it was the last shot of all of season two. The very, very last shot. I was like, come on, let me do it. It'll look so much better. If, like, you see my face as I go into the case, it'll be amazing. Come on, let me do it, let me do it. He's like, no, it's real glass. I can't let you do it. You'll get cut. It's the last scene. I don't have I don't have to be on camera Monday. Who cares if my face gets cut? Like, no, I can't let you do it. He's like, I, he's like, I can't. He's like, it's not that you can't do it. It's that I won't let you do it. <laughs> I was like, oh. Well, were you 18 yet even? I was. I yeah. was 18. Uh, I know. See, Sholo wasn't, so he wasn't able to film a lot of his scenes. 
Yeah, he sucks though. That's that's the main. <laughs> Like they they said it's because he was a minor, but let's be real. Yeah. Well, uh, um, Josh is obviously part of the big three, and I think a lot of people kind of forget, or maybe not even know, that he has directed four of the episodes, uh, two in each <laughs> seasons, both five and six. Two oh five is my second favorite episode in the entire second se- uh, se- second season, which is a lot about Hawk. Okay, um, what can you tell us uh, about that episode? You got the mall brawl, right? Uh, you got the breakup with Moon that has the the wonder that follows you into that back dojo too. Just an incredible scene and, and moment. Yeah, um, what's funny is I think in season three. Oh no, no, no! Sorry, I was, <laughs> I was about to spoil something. <laughs> we, 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 we we would have stopped you if the E's actually came out of your mouth. Like no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. It was registering okay. a little slow for me. I was just like, Three? "Is he gonna?" <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, shoot. Sorry. Uh, no, yeah, I, he, we uh, sat down at lunch and had a conversation about kind of all the beats that were going to happen. And uh, I, I, I love whenever he directs, just because he he is so good at communicating with actors and so kind of like getting what he wants out of them you know and he's very easy to understand same with um john and hayden as well uh but it's always super fun whenever he directs and that was a really fun episode because uh, you know a lot of it were a lot of that episode was backstory for hawk and yeah those those beats were were really fun i remember uh this the moon breakup scene there wasn't a ton of um, crew there because um, oh. it it was just it was it, there wasn't a lot of setups for it. Um, that scene went by pretty quick, and I, that was kind of the most intimate kind of talking with a director that I've had, um, just about the scene. And we got to do you know a bunch of takes of it, and that that was that was really really fun scene to shoot. You know, with Hannah, she was awesome. So. Yeah, that's whenever I think of season five, I think of that, and uh, and yeah, the mall brawl, and obviously the cold open, which was which is really fun too. Um, that was the one that that started with um you you back as Eli, right? Yeah, with the sweater. Yeah. So that one kind of mirrors, I thought, and I thought it was interesting. Um, episode five from season one, which was Daniel starts out as a giant massive douchebag and then by the end he's this sweet innocent daniel again right and here's eli going the other direction yeah the next season and i just thought that was i don't know if they did it on purpose i'm sure they did they do everything on oh, purpose I, they did just like gone with Merwim, you know yeah yeah well uh, i mean you mentioned the cold open and we uh, also um uh, interviewed carolyn who, who was your mother in that scene oh wow that's awesome yeah and so what can you tell us uh, about kind of getting prepared? Because it's a very emotional scene. Your eyes are red. Like, how much of that was makeup and how much of that was you actually, like, getting into the moment as well? Yeah, uh, we did um, a couple takes with, you know, no makeup and then did some with. And that scene, what's funny about that day, actually, is we would do block, uh, not block shooting, um, we do double up days. That's the term I'm looking for. We would do double up days sometimes. So we would have two units going on the same lot filming different episodes. So I think during that, like Marty and Billy were filming a scene in the, um, in the, uh, Cobra Kai dojo and the kitchen, uh, that we filmed, uh, the cold open in was actually, uh, Daniel's bedroom. Okay. That they re really? uh, did. Yeah, yeah, that they read it. And oh, actually wow. the, the the set designers for Cobra Kai are actually the same ones for uh, Kirby Buckets, which is pretty crazy. Oh, Ryan Berg? Yeah, yeah. No, no kidding. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that dude's awesome, by the way. But, yeah, yeah, uh, he is. Yeah. But it was it was honestly pretty quick. In that mo- so I did a scene as blue haired hawk and then went and got my hair dyed. And did a scene as Red Haired Hawk, and then went and got a wig on and did a scene as Eli. <laughs> All in that one day. 
Right. That was the yeah. single best wig that the costume designers have pulled out through the entire two seasons then, because I thought that they had filmed that with you before anything else started for the season. It looked really good. Oh, yeah, that was, a, that was a wig. And I, wow. I will say they tried on two or three different wigs and it was, um, um, they really, really wanted it dialed in and it was, you know, it, it, when I would put my hand up, to my hair like in between takes it was like it was in the same spot like everything was the same it, it was a really really good wig um and i remember uh josh uh while we were filming that that scene was just constantly like wow like, the wig is so good you know yeah it was yeah i know it's a testament to the hair and makeup for sure oh, um yeah. Fun trivia for those that are tuning in right now. Um, Jacob, you just mentioned that that was Daniel's room uh, in the kitchen there um, at the Moskowitz's house. See, I almost messed that up again. Uh, (laughs) He keeps calling him Moskowitz. Yeah, that's Fievel from uh, American Tale. But, um, you know, shout out to your boy Rico, right? We, we, heard, we heard about him in the first season. We see him in the second season. Uh, the, the, the tattoo parlor, that was actually the same room as um, the Keens' apartment, I believe. Yeah. Dang, you know your stuff. Yeah. Oh, we got a tour. You know? Hayden knows oh, his stuff, right. and he was our tour guide oh. or tour guide i'm yeah. going to <laughs> use my question time to ask you jacob i hate to do this but when you were answering the question about episode five you accidentally said season five can you please reassure the chat that you did not just spoil season five uh i did not spoil season five thank uh, you <laughs> I, have, yeah, I have no idea what what's gonna happen in season five <laughs> We're just, just to our calm fingers everyone down, because I, I saw that a, a whole lot of excitement, and it was just a misstatement. It's okay. I caught that too, but I, did, I didn't think anybody would start going crazy in the chat. <laughs> um, How see, so we, we talked uh, um, about the um, uh, Coyote Creek, but uh, tell me about, you know, kind of, you know, some insight or memories of filming uh, episode 209 at the at the house party. You know, you shared um, a moment with uh, Piper or Hawk does. And then also where he gets roasted by uh, Dimitri there at the party. Yeah, that was a that was a really, really fun shoot just because all the kids were there. And I think it was like two days, two or three days. And that house was huge. Um we had an endless supply of hot chocolate, which was super great. Uh, me, Aiden, and Khalil would play beer pong outside in between takes. Uh, it, w- it was a it was it was a really really fun time. Um, yeah, and that whole uh, that whole roast scene, um, I was only there for like half of it because a lot of it is just a clean single of Gianni just talking. <laughs> So I wasn't even there for when he was like really, really, uh, roasting me, but he was, uh, when it came back and they did my, uh, my clean single of it, Gianni was there kind of like reading the line. So that was, that was cool. But, uh, yeah, I will say I was one of the funniest moments was when Paul who plays Stingray has, you know, the double fisted forties and he's just running around trying to open everything. It was just really funny that I always think of that as well. Um, in the, the school fight, I mean, we all know what happens at the end, obviously. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, um, and, and it's, it's been kind of a theory I kicked around a little bit. I talked to um, Michael Jonathan Smith about it last week. Um, okay. Because when you're doing the, the here's Johnny moment down the hallway in the computer lab, um, Dimitri's watching, and you are way down the hallway on his left before he turns around. And then when he turns around, you're standing right behind him in the opposite door. Yeah. So I, I keep asking, are, is, is Hawk, does he have superpowers or wings or did he dig tunnels? Uh, I think that was uh, with Luan that told us that. Oh, Luan. Yeah. Yeah. So Hawk definitely has wings. And also his knowledge of the layout of the school is superb. Mm-hmm. And uh, he can obviously smell the fear that is just coming out of Dimitri whenever he's around. So naturally, he knew where he was, knew when he would be out of his sight because he's such a mega being. 
and was able to just be there at the right moment. Well, and plus, you're, yeah, I, I mean, he's still a big giant math nerd, so he could figure out the calculus of the direct route to get there. And of course, right. yeah, binary brothers, absolutely. Yeah, um, you know, I'm I'm sitting here watching you, and because we just uh, interviewed Chilo the other day. It's a, it's a little uncanny because I, I can tell that you guys spent a lot of time together because there's a little bit of similar mannerisms here and there. Oh, um, yeah, sure. I, I, I always say my dad. I always have the same mannerisms as my dad. Now, you, um, you, you mentioned Paul, and I actually forgot about this, too. Uh, when we spoke with Paul, he mentioned uh, there were some uh, improv lines that he gave about like why Stingray was late. And he said that you kept on cracking up at the different variations that he give uh, gave. Do you recall that that moment? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely do. He was that guy. That guy is so funny. Um, I mean, we were we were all we were all dying at everything he was saying. I mean, he was constantly just cracking jokes on set and you know in between takes, and he would come in and just not deliver lines to say something just outrageous. I mean, that dude was. He's talented. That guy's awesome. He's really good. Yeah. All right. So we've only got about five more minutes because you said you needed to leave. Our... Um, at the end of, again, the, the school fight, when after Miguel falls, um, there's a shot that I grew up Catholic. So the statuary on the Catholic altar um, with the Christ figure with Mary and St. John the Baptist at his feet is like a, you know, ingrained in my brain because I saw it every Sunday. When they yeah. pull the camera back up, um, Miguel obviously is in the crucifixion position. He's got Mary at his feet and you coming down at his head. And I was wondering yeah. if there was any discussion of the religious symbolism there. You know what's so funny is there is there wasn't. And what's weird is it kind of just ended up that way, you know. And it's weird, you know, it's uncanny how you describe it and then it's you know, that symbolism kind of could be there and there could be an argument and an explanation for that. Um, but no, originally, I don't even think in the first couple takes, I don't even know if Mary um, w was running up. I think in this script, it was, I don't even know if in the script anyone's supposed to run. Up. I just ran up on the first take and then I think the second take, Mary was like, hey, like I feel like I would run up. And they're like, yeah, do it. Um, I think that's, yeah, I think that's so – that kind of just ended, ended up being something that happened. You know, I don't even know if that was something that was really scripted that Mary ran up. It yeah. was a beautiful shot. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, um, you know, uh, like, like Brianna said, we do have a few more minutes with you. Uh, obviously, we can't talk about the future of Cobra Kai, but because you just did you, – know, you, you just filmed Judd's Decision, your, your short film, is there any – um, possibilities of you perhaps being a guest director on an episode of Cobra Kai. Is that something you've ever <laughs> thought about? Uh, I mean, yeah, that would be awesome. I would I would love to do that. I don't think uh, they would trust me with two weeks of, <laughs> of uh, production. But if they want to trust me with that, I have no objections. Uh, no, yeah, I would love to. I mean, I grew up um, – I grew up a very, you know, curious kid. And, uh, on, I, it was, I was very grateful that Kirby Buckets was a single camera show, just like Cobra Kai. And I would kind of run around with a little notebook and ask the director's questions. Like, you know, like, how do you prepare? Like, you know, what, you know, how do you decide this blocking and this and this and that? And so, you know, I saw this notebook that I have a bunch of, you know, really talented, you know, directors that are still working, um, and just kind of like their process and what they would do for, you know, episodic television and, Disney's the king. They're like a machine, you know. They freaking churn out episodes because they have way less time than a show like Cobra Kai does because all the kids are minors and they have, you know, only nine and a half hours for shoot days or ten and a half hours. So um, coming at it from that angle, I think yeah, I I know how to push and rush stuff, but um, if they if they wanted me to direct, if that was an opportunity, I definitely would. Nice. Yeah. Last question from me. What do you think that Hawk has been doing during the pandemic? I think catching up on some Doctor Who, some of that new Doctor Who. <laughs> <laughs> I I think he kind of uh, ditched all that stuff. Unfortunately, the nerd uh, shit. Yeah, he had to ditch the nerd shit. You know. Yeah. Uh, 
I think, honestly, he's probably been working out nonstop. Uh, I think him and Miguel ha- – oh, wait, I can't. <laughs> it's a uh, hypothetical it, situation it because you, they, yeah. they don't exist in our universe. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. We'll go from season one. There we uh, go. Season one Hawk is probably picking out, you know, what new hair color he's going to get, you know, what new Mohawk design. Him and him and Miguel probably going to the beach, hanging out. Uh, he's probably hassling people all the time. He's probably pulling people's masks off. You know, he's, he's probably oh, that. No. <laughs> oh, he so would. Yeah, oh, no, he, I, he totally would. I, he, I believe it, but damn. Oh, yeah, I know. You're like, oof, damn. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so for my last question, question before we wrap up um any insight that you can give I, I, again 205 uh, for those you know that maybe watch the show just one time through go back and watch 205 all in very it, it's it's a roller coaster of emotions happy sad mad frustrated it's, especially as a viewer for me growing up in karate kid films to see the cobras sneak over to miyagi do in the middle of the night yeah. It ruffled my hawk feathers, right? What, <laughs> what insight could you give me or give us uh, about that? Did you guys even help out with the actual destruction of Miyagi-Do? They, they wouldn't let us. They wouldn't let us help out with the destruction, which I was kind of bummed about. And uh, I just don't even think there was enough time to film it. Um, but uh, that was a really, really fun scene. So the – I don't know if it's in that episode or an earlier episode, but – there's an episode where Tanner is like polishing that sign and mm-hmm. the one yeah. that I spray paint over. Yeah, when he finishes uh, putting the nail in. Yeah, 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 yeah. We filmed that right before I put the spray paint over it. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, and that scene, it was it was pretty quick, but I just remember the like the weight that that we all knew the weight that that scene would carry and how you know, it is for a lot of people. It's like, damn, like that is the stronghold of Miyagi Do. Yeah, you know? that's it's his house, and so it was a huge moment. Even just the lines were. I forget the line. It's like, uh, now we finish the fight or whatever. Um, but yeah, that was a that was a really really cool moment because that was one of the few moments in the show. I was like, dang, like this is this is a very big moment right here pretty hardcore yeah pretty hardcore for sure I, I i remember watching it and i uh i messaged aj and i was like i forgot what i said but basically i was like really aj like the miyagi do <laughs> and his response was kind of like i'm sorry like i don't it's <laughs> funny but uh yeah our uh, unfortunately our time with you um has to run out so uh, again we want to thank you so much for coming on the show um obviously there's things that you cannot promote right now but is there anything that you can uh to just just shout out to the viewers to check out um, just watch out for a TBD podcast that's going to come out uh, sometime soon. Uh, yeah, if you haven't seen my short film, check it out. It's on my Instagram. Uh, I have a YouTube channel, but I honestly don't ever post things on it. So if you want to subscribe, go for it. But I probably won't be posting things on there. <laughs> there you are. Judd's decisions. Uh, you decision. have a Twitter that infected my Twitter with the a need to sell Ray-Bans, apparently, a couple of months Uh-oh. ago. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't use my Twitter. I'll hop on every once in a while if they need, if they really need me to retweet something. But I, I, I don't use it. I didn't yeah. figure you did, and I didn't figure you really just had a sudden need to sell Ray Bans either. I want so, the world to know that they could get a great discount on a Ray Ban. <laughs> yeah, I goal and I completed it. Well, thank All you right. very much. <laughs> All right, Brianna, uh, you want to close out with uh, anything you want to promote? Um. No, nothing at the moment. I've got stuff in the works, but I can't talk about it yet. So Okay. All right. Uh, everyone, just check out our website, CobraKaiCompanion.com. That's where you can find all 52 interviews. Uh, Sholo was last, our last one. Michael Jonathan Smith, one of the writers. Um, a lot of them. The big three has been on there, Ralph and Billy. Uh, check it out. All right. So, uh, Jacob, stand by. Uh, just, again, shout out to the viewers. Thank you guys for listening, and we'll see you guys next time. Thanks, guys. Bye, everybody.